Greetings hobbies, this is Arsanza Vool. In this video I just wanted to go through a couple of bevel tips. So this came about after someone messaged me and they were having a bit of an issue doing a bevel on a shape basically similar to this. They'd got an elongated cube just like this and they'd booleaned out a hole in the centre, basically creating some sort of window. And they went to bevel this and they had this slight issue. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I apply this. So I'm just going to use hard dots for that. But you could have done that over here in the modifier section by applying it. And they went to create a bevel. Now for this, obviously we need to control A and apply the scale. That wasn't their issue. That's what I thought it was at first. But what they were doing is they'd selected these edges here. And they control B and they wanted a single edged bevel. What we'd call a chamfer. So they did that. And they were perfectly happy with it until they went on front view and they saw that we've got one side that's at a different angle to the other and they weren't sure why. If I just undo this, the reason why is that we've got these edges here, which Blender will sort of try to use as a guide for when it's creating a bevel. Now you can ask Blender to ignore this, so if you just click these again and Control and B, you'll see that this bevel goes along those edges. It effectively uses it as a guide, so as you do this, affect the bevel on that slide. And this is because, if you can't see this box on the left hand side, it's because it'll be down here, so just click it before you click on anything else. The loop slide is clicked on. If you click that off, it will ignore that loop and will not use it as a guiding edge. So it's a really, really easy solution to be able to fix this. Now, the reason that we have to have these edges is that you can't just have an object in the middle of nowhere cutting through a face without it being connected to the outside face. But you can do things to potentially manipulate this. So let's say, for example, I go into vertex mode and then I'm going to just use the knife tool to cut, let's say, to there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And that, if I go into edge mode, allows me to get rid of these two edges. So I'm going to control and X to delete them. And just because I want everything to look the same, I'm just going to grab that vertex, that vertex, and use machine tools and Alt A to align those. Machine tools is free, by the way, so do have a look at getting that. Now, this will allow us to control this guiding edge or these guiding edges in a way so that we can move things around. And this is probably easiest to see if I just bevel these without using a destructive method, but by using a non-destructive method. So I'm going to go to edge mode, select those edges, and I'm going to press Q for hard ops, and I'm going to control click on mark, and that allows me to create this. I'm going to just do that down to a chamfer as we had before. But what you'll see is that makes a bevel just the way you would normally, except for it's a modifier so it's not going to be something that's destructive you can do this without hard ops you just need to make a vertex group and then assign the limit group as a vertex group instead of angle which it normally is and if i go to geometry here i've got loop slide on and what that means that i can do if i go into vertex mode and select these vertices and press gg i can slide these up now to affect my bevel at the bottom now it will have a slight effect on the side as well so it is worth noting that, but it does mean that you can do some cool manipulation if I just come from this angle and GG those up, or you could just G and Z to make them come up. You can see that you can change that bottom one as you want. So say you've got a window, you might have a less steep bevel on the bottom than you do in the sides and the top. So it's really fun to be able to play around with this. Now I'm just gonna get rid of that for a second and then just talk about one more thing that we could do with this and we're just gonna need to reposition these lines to demonstrate it. So what I'll do is just knife that to there and then knife that one to there so they're sort of out the way. And usually this bit will work without loop slide being on so we don't need to worry about the loop slide bit. Now say we wanted to bevel just a couple of the edges. So we wanted what we had earlier where we don't want to have much of an angle on the bottom of this windowsill. In fact, we want no angle on this windowsill. So I just want to bevel that edge, that edge, and that edge. If I press Control and B, you'll notice that, well, this goes very bizarre and strange. And that is because if I click it, even if I put loop slide on or off, we've got this weird thing happening where the bottom edge isn't beveling because it doesn't have anything to bevel along because there are no supporting edges coming from those bottom vertices. Just to demonstrate a point, I'm going to again bring out the knife tool and I'm going to go there. I'm going to press X to make it perfectly sideways and then hit enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. But instead of that, I'm going to press Z and go directly down. And this is just to demonstrate a point. As long as we've got these guiding edges, this will give Blender something to work off. So if I now select those edges, press Control and B, we can now bevel these and it will work fine. Now you'll notice that regardless of whether I've got loop slide on or off, it will not be affecting these. In fact, it's only affecting them because of the top one. So let's just Control and X 
to make that easier to see because we've now got two edges coming off so we don't need those so i'm going to control and b and then we've got these as our nice chamfer and you'll notice that it doesn't matter what direction they're coming off this will work i will say sometimes that does make a difference and that this is obviously better geometry than that so i'll definitely go via this method not that so try to go at 90 degrees or directly out from the one that you want and you can see look this makes a really nice effect we don't have to just do it as a chamfer oh that one funky let's just uh fix that again so we've got that there go in the x but we can just select our edges here and then do this not just as a chamfer but we could do it rounded as well and this allows us to make some really really nice effects i will say that when you come into this and have a look at the edges it does make this more mess of edges here i mean it's not the worst thing in the world it's not going to cause us any problems for 3d printing but I would say it's probably worth going to Q operations and clean mesh if you've got hard ops or just manually cleaning that up if you don't by deleting out those edges. Now, just talking about hard ops, I will say there is a limit here. For example, I quite like doing things non-destructively and hard ops, if you wanted to do this bevel non-destructively, won't actually work. I press Q and then come in here and press control on mark. Normally you'd be able to bevel this and you should be able to just bevel it on these sides, but you'll notice it's not. If you press H, you can see that we can change this limit method. At the moment, this is doing it with vertex groups, which means that the vertex that's on each of these corners is having this applied to, which means it works on everything. If I use L to change the limit method, so to angle, to angle, you'll see that regardless of what I do, I can't make this work, which is a little bit frustrating. What you've got to do instead is we just select those edges, Q, and then mark with hard ops, add modifier, bevel, and then we change this limit method to weight. You'll notice that when I was doing this, it automatically comes up as vertex group. And when I shifted through it, it doesn't have weight as an option, which is unfortunate. That'd be good if they put that in. And then you can do the same thing non-destructively and then affect the segments as much as you want. So you've got a lot of options here to allow you to do things that feel like they shouldn't work really, but they do. Now, when we go here and click apply and go into the vertex again, or have a look at this, you will notice that it does still create these lines. So that does again once you apply this create the need to clean this up so just a few tips there on working and playing around with bevels to help solve some problems and hopefully give some people some options they didn't realize they had as always if you'd like to support the channel it'd be really appreciated if you click the like button if you found this video useful if you're not subscribed subscribe and if you want to support the channel further than that there is a link to my patreon page in the description box and i just want to say thank you to all those people that are supporting the channel on patreon it really does help out and you guys are absolutely awesome have a great day, guys.